Hello, everyone. I guess we can start. Uh, first of all, to say just a few words about myself, I work as a software engineer at Good Code here in Zagreb. And uh, since our original speaker couldn't make it today, I came in as a replacement. And before we even begin, I just want to explain the, the subject a bit. Uh, when I say socially awkward community, I don't want to say that that is uh, something negative or different from myself. I, for instance, I have to keep reminding myself when I talk in front of large groups of people not to stare at my feet and speak very slowly or silently. I have to speak up and actually look at you. Uh, as I said, it's not a general rule. It's just something that I've noticed about our community. Perhaps the, the people working in IT don't necessarily uh, have the need to, to push themselves forward uh, into all those social matters. And uh, that would be it. And let's begin. Why should we even talk about this topic? Uh, first of all, our industry is constantly growing. And uh, therefore, I, I don't think that we are competition to each other. Uh, there are enough jobs for all of us, and it doesn't hurt to help each other in that way. Because if we help each other, then we are making the industry better, which in turn makes our jobs better. And what is very important, at least for me, it reduces stress at workplace. I don't want to work somewhere where I am constantly stressed out. Probably no one wants to work like that. Before we say something about how senior engineers or senior designers should treat junior ones, let's see what are the common issues that usually juniors face, but not just juniors, everyone can face them. Uh, you've heard all, already something about the imposter syndrome during the keynote speak. The imposter syndrome is, I will read you one of the definitions, Despite external evidence of my competence, I remain convinced that it is only a matter of time before I am discovered to be a fraud. I attribute my success so far to luck, timing, and deception. When I found out that something like the imposter syndrome exists, I started feeling better about myself because up until that point I was certain it was just me. Then it turns out almost everyone has it. Uh, not so often will you meet someone who has who's on the other side of the specter, the Dunning-Kruger effect, the guy or the girl that thinks he or she knows everything but doesn't know much. It's actually probably more of a problem than the imposter syndrome, and all this can lead to you simply being overwhelmed. And I have this colleague at work who, who tends to get overwhelmed sometimes, and then he starts talking about doing something else for a living, like farming and stuff like that. It's very normal. So what, what can you do as someone with a bit more experience than your colleague who doesn't have uh, that, that much experience? But before we say that, what can you do if you, are, if you are the junior and you have no one around you to help you? I can tell you that you are not alone. But it's just a statement, you're not alone. That's something you shouldn't hear from me. You can forget all about me in this talk when you leave this room. But it is something that you should hear from the colleagues at your work, because you will not forget how the colleagues at your work treated you. And if you don't get that sort of support from someone who's, let's say, above you, try talking to your peers and being honest about it. And in my experience, when you start talking and be open about your problems, you'll be surprised by what you hear, because you will probably and most likely hear that other people have the same problems as you. And as misery loves company, you will probably feel a bit better, even if, if, even if you don't hear something constructive that will actually help you. And now, enter seniors, who have a lot of experience, and don't always want to deal with your problems in a way that you would like them to deal with your problems. Uh, maybe 
you are self-taught and have a lot of experience. You use books and internet and you say, okay, I had a hard time coming to where I am, so why shouldn't they have a hard time? Yeah, but even those books and uh, tutorials and online, they were all written by someone who reached out to the community in order to help. So it's just a different way of helping. If you don't want to write books or write tutorials or online resources, you can sit down with your junior engineers and, and help them. Also, you will be helping yourself because if you have better colleagues, they will make your life easier. And uh, normally I'm not uh, talking about teaching anyone anything from scratch. If someone's already working at a company, you will, uh, you will need them to have at least some sort of experience and then you will just teach them details. How to recognize when you're needed. Ideally, they will simply tell you, hey, I need help. But if that doesn't happen, try to notice some changes in their mood. Maybe they're trying to ask you, but they're shy or they're afraid to ask you or they're they are starting to talk about alternatives to coding, as I said earlier, the farming. And uh, you can also ask them every day if they need any, some sort of help. But before you help them, let's see what not to do. Uh, you, you, you can sometimes get a bit impatient, maybe even angry. Maybe you don't even think about your social skills ever because Maybe you didn't have uh, the opportunity to learn something more about communication and uh, interpersonal and, uh, and the communication inside the group. So don't get angry or irritated, although you might want to get angry or irritated. Hear them out. You'll need to have some patience as well. So try not to lose it. But most importantly, don't be the silver bullet. Don't just uh, solve their problems for them. Don't sit next to your guy or girl who has a problem and code, code out their problem. Uh, try working with them because otherwise they won't learn anything. So let's ignore the ideal case in where you have one se senior engineer on one junior engineer and they do peer programming the whole day. I don't know if any company has a setup like that. It's ideal, but it's not happening. So. When you try to help, remember that there was indeed a time where you didn't know much and you probably didn't feel very good about yourself at least once in your career. It's very good to be away from that, but still there are people feeling that way. Teach them to break down problems. Uh, it sounds very, very easy, but when I talk to, to the students at a local college where I sometimes uh, teach practical exercises, I'm surprised by how people lack the skill to break down problems. So tr try teaching uh, those with less experience how to notice patterns in what you are doing every day. As I said earlier, solve issues together. As Ben Franklin said, uh, tell me and I will forget. Teach me and I'll remember, and involve me and I will learn. So it's best to involve them. Also, what I've found to be helpful is uh, making comparisons to your own past. Uh, for instance, we were working on an issue together, and I remember that it's very similar to something I've been doing like a few years back, and I was stuck for two days. Uh, wh why I think it's helpful? When, when I was uh, inexperienced, I was certain that all those uh, with a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge were simply born that way. I will never be that way. And uh, I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to realize that they had a long process of learning, which I have to do as well. So when, when someone with more experience than me made some comparisons to their past in order to relate to me and to tell me, okay, I had I had been stuck the, way, the same way you were stuck. It made me feel like there's hope. You should always allow mistakes. Of course, not. If you, if you have an engineer who's uh, at your company for like a year and does constant mistakes every day, that's a different thing. But generally, you should allow mistakes to, to support their growth. Uh, 
few years back, I was working uh, as a remote engineer for this company in San Francisco. And uh, probably a month after I was hired, I made a, quite a big mistake and uh, I committed something. We were generally having a bad practice of, with committing everything directly to master and just rebooting the servers. Very bad. Don't do it. And uh, the main feature of the website was down for like half an hour and the customers were furious and I was certain I will get fired. But I didn't get fired. And then like a year later I, I talked to the CEO and I told him that I was certain that I would get fired there and then. And he said, no, no, you, you must never be afraid to make a mistake, no matter what the mistake is. And if you are constantly afraid, you won't be able to do your job properly. Try to ask everyone for their input, their opinion, even if you already know what you will do. It doesn't help to involve someone and ask, maybe you will hear something that you haven't heard before take all your juniors to meetups and conferences, such as this, to meet new people. If it's possible, praise them among your colleagues, tell them, hey, this is our new engineer, she's been with us for just a month and she's already doing great. It will boost their confidence. You can hang out after work and uh, meet them, perhaps see if there are some blockers outside of work that you weren't, uh, that you weren't, uh, that you didn't know even existed. Of course, you're not a psychologist, you're not an expert, but still you can be a good friend or at least a good colleague, someone they can talk to. And probably most importantly, give lots of feedback. Uh, I mean, this goes to everyone. If you are not receiving feedback, you, you don't know where you are, what's happening, whether you're up for a promotion or you're about to get fired, I think that everyone should get a lot of feedback and daily, weekly, as often as you can give feedback. Should you decide to follow some of these guidelines, what might happen? The sun will obviously start to shine. Juniors can become empowered to grow and develop their skills cannot be a bad thing. They won't leave their jobs due to lack of support or because they think they're not good enough, but they are good enough, they just like the support. Imagine uh, working on a large project that requires a lot of your time and your energy and you would really do good with some help, but there's no one there to help you, so if you mentor junior engineers, you will soon get the help you require. And, most importantly, overall stress is reduced, the atmosphere is more friendly, the team probably won't fall apart, at least soon, it will be alive for some time. And I think that that's probably the most important issue here. And that would be all. Thank you.